If you are enjoying the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing to my Patreon linked below. I'd like to thank my patrons Aaron, Corey and Michael uh, for making uh, life a little bit easier for me. Now if I timed this right, this would be my 40th episode and I'd like to do something a little bit special. Um, as you can see, I've got my uh, baby Zaku too here and uh, what I want to do with this episode is create it in six parts. What I'm going to do is do a little tutorial for each of the six different types of metal that I found myself uh, creating over the past couple of years and I'm going to take this guy, split him into six parts, create six mini episodes and show you how to create um, a couple of effects. First would be um, creating a rusted metal effect. And the second is a painted but chipped metal. Um, third, I'd like to do a polished metal. Fourth, a brushed and beaten. That, that would be similar to my polished metal, but um, it would be a little bit more, you know, sort of fuzzy. Um, fifth, a heated or molten metal, which would be quite nice if I did it on the uh, Zakutu's uh, torso. And lastly, uh, chrome. I, I selected this part because there are a lot of nice round pieces to sort of demonstrate that. So the next time you see all of them put together, they all be sort of uh, already done up in all these individual treatments. Now, uh, I, what I've done first is I've already primed all of them in black. Um, I would suggest when you're doing uh, metal textures to prime in black because it does make life a lot easier and it does make metallics pop out. And bear in mind, I will be using actual metallics. I'm not doing any non-metallic metal. So uh, without much uh, further delay, I'd like to start off with my uh, first um, uh, treatment, which is rusted metal. So for rusted metal, what I have here is the arm and I can paint in sub-assembly so that's what I'll be doing. I'm using uh, a number 4, a pretty, pretty big round brush and with my wet palette setup, I'm going to basically base the entire thing in lead belcher. So thin down slightly and then a uh, whole base in a lead belcher. And at this point, you don't have to be too tidy. Since it is rusted metal, we will be going over all this with the rust later on. Uh, what you want to do is just cover up any trace of plastic. Now with the uh, base out of the way, I'd just like to show you a couple of references. Um, you'll notice that in rust, it does not just appear as a red. Uh, it does come in as orange and yellow, some green hues, a little bit of white tips. So the more dynamic range you add to your rust effects, the more realistic it's going to look and the more visually interesting it will look. Now that will depend on whether you want that portion of your miniature to be visually interesting. Sometimes you want to draw the eye away um, from those portions. Now, as a base for the rust, I'll be using Typhus Corrosion, but then later on, when I go into doing all the colors uh, of the oxides that come in, you'll see me using primarily orange, but you can feel free to experiment with other colors as well, and I would encourage that. But what I'm going to do now is, with that reference in mind, you'll see that since this is the direction in relation to the ground that uh, this uh, component will be in, I will want to put more rust close to the side, the edge um, that faces the ground, and less on the top edge. Um, 
my in in my mind i'd say that more moisture is going to flow down and collect around the base and that's going to cause more corrosion around the bottom uh the bottom half of this uh this um component uh, so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to take my typhus corrosion i'm going to give it a good shake and without diluting it I will use my brush clean, um, having washed off all the lead belcher because you don't want to uh, contaminate this. I will be applying typhus corrosion lightly near the top and heavily near the bottom. I just want to stop short of uh, covering the the metal entirely so you don't have to be too fastidious about this you can have a fair amount of leeway doing this and sometimes I want to touch on the edges like so that's exactly what I want. This is exactly what I want to look like. In sections where you do see quite a lot of detail, I just want to give it a good wipe so that there is more typhus corrosion in the crevices than there is on the big, broad, flat areas. So that's what you see here. Um, I'm going to start pushing my finger across and almost wiping that away and the typhus corrosion sort of settles in the crevices uh, a bit like a wash again accumulate more at the bottom edge or you know at the the back of the arm instead of the inside where you have been more exposed to uh, the elements and more exposed to accumulated uh, dirt and, and moisture so that's the effect that uh, we have right now. Now we're not done with the typhus corrosion yet but what you want to do now is make sure that your brush is very very thoroughly washed because typhus corrosion has aggregate inside it and that would collect very very close uh, to the stem of your brush. So you want to go to a tap now, put it under running water and give it a good wash. Now you've no doubt seen this next step before, what I want to do is now find myself a sponge and um, if you've watched my earlier video on the, uh, the rust recipe, you'll see me uh, do this. I, I've got a pretty fine sponge now and what I want to do is create sort of a broken and ragged texture on the end. It doesn't have to be too big, um, in fact the finer you can make it the better and what you want is sort of a, a ragged edge uh, to the sponge and you want to make it quite random you don't want to uh, to make too regular an edge and that's uh, somewhat um, the kind of texture that I want and now what I want to do is sort of get a load of typhus corrosion around the tip of the sponge around that ragged edge and some people, some painters sort of dry off this sponge or dab it off somewhere but what I want to do is because I want my corrosion to be very contrasting uh, with the clean metal at the back so without dabbing this dry or, or cleansing it I want to very lightly touch the uh, metal and what that's going to give me is these very defined splotches so that's exactly what I want in fact I think I actually want to use uh, more I want to load up my brush even more so I'm going back I'm doing the same thing again and you want to vary the direction of your sponge as well uh, so that it does not look like a repeated pattern. So here we go. Uh, you can see that I'm focusing as well on uh, the edges of the metal since that's going to 
accumulate you know, more uh, corrosion and I'll come back to that later when it's had a little bit of time to dry and we're back now that we've given our typhus corrosion some time to dry I've prepared a 2 to 1 mix of yellow to red to give me this orange now you can use riser rust you can use any other colors but the thing that I want to do that's different from the last time is I want to water that down so I'm gonna grab myself a little bit of water and sort of create this almost sort of watercolor uh, consistency um, for that and then I'm going to start to dab my uh, sort of watercolor mix all over my rust. Uh, so let me just focus. Okay, so now I've got that focus. So what I want to do is get that sort of watercolor consistency and then dab it into the rust. You can see as I do that, you start to accumulate all this texture and the orange actually flows into the crevices in between uh, the particles of typhus corrosion and that gives me very very interesting and dynamic texture you don't always need the dark colors in the crevices and the light colors out in the uh, raised parts sometimes it looks nice when you allow sort of a watercolor consistency type of paint to flow in between those grits and give you a very organic effect and you'll see that I've intentionally left sections unpainted as well um, and that's going to give us also a lot of a dynamic range to the effect that we're applying And of course, the uh, and of course the uh, water is going to allow it to behave in a very random way. Um, I've got some bright areas and some dim areas, and that's going to you know do me just fine. So I'm just gonna add a bit more water back and create a little bit more of my watercolor type mix, and then apply that. And you'll see what I've done here is I've taken advantage of some of the mold in the plastic as well to sort of allow the water, the very watered down mix to collect inside. That is going to create that sort of interesting uh, accumulated rust as well. So this is going to take longer to dry. So. I suggest that when you are done with this step to let it dry for at least 20 minutes before coming back to the next step. So now that the rust has had some time to dry, you'll see that the coffee staining effects and sort of the allowing the orange to rest in all those crevices has given a very nice dynamic look to my rust. And now, what we want to do is break out our trusty raggedy sponge again. And um, in this case, we want to be very, very frugal. I'm taking um, an Althuan Grey. And what I want to do is soak up my sponge with that Althuan Grey. And now, this part differs from uh, what I did just now. I want to dab this off on a cloth or a paper towel and sort of just achieve that very dry, dry kind of look. Now with that, and again being very, very, very frugal with this, is to just have a couple of indications of that whitish corrosion that you find uh, on some uh, on some metal metal pieces. So, up my focus, 
and just very lightly touch some areas. So once this is dry, which won't take long, um, I'm going to then go over with a 1-1 mix of Nong Oil and uh, Lamian Medium. So that's done with the Nong Oil. Um, and what's left is now picking out some of the chipped areas uh, where it would show nice, pristine, clean metal underneath. Imagine that if I had all this rust and I just went over it with a huge grinder, it would actually reveal nice pristine metal underneath. That's what I want to simulate. So there was a way earlier on which I actually use a Molotow liquid chrome. I do understand that a lot of people don't have Molotow liquid chrome and I'll be using Stormhold Silver in this case. And what I'll want to do is use a really very, very, very dry brush of Stormhole Silver in just selected areas. Um, certain broad sections where these edges are nice and sharp um, and on the corners and that's going to give me a very nice effect. Once the non oil dries, I'll be right back. So uh, what we have here is a brush loaded up with Stormhole Silver and then brushed off onto a cloth until almost completely dry. What's that, what that's going to allow me to do is then now pick out some of these edges with bright cuts of Stormhole Silver just to break up all the monotony of uh, the corrosion. So I do want to like put a nice amount of contrast in there like so. That is to simulate the uh, uh, the wear and tear, or sort of the the weathering over the weathering, how sand grit and uh, impacts would actually knock off all the accumulated rust and actually show the nice pristine metal underneath. softened uh, this mottled section here is a little bit too uh, too defined as well so I can knock back the contrast by just pushing stormhole silver into some of the sections of the raised areas here and now it doesn't look so now it doesn't look so weird and again you can see that I I'm actually being more frugal around this bottom section, maintaining my commitment to having more corrosion on the bottom edge than the top. So same with those pauldrons. There. And now all that's left is a little bit of uh, a little bit of detail work, where what I'm going to do is just take a detail brush, small one, and do some um, scratches and cuts. So what I have here is a relatively well conditioned number zero brush. What I want to do is just do some very interesting streaks of uh, metal across here. And there we are, um, I'm quite happy with the uh, rust and corrosion effect on this and uh, we'll move on to the, the next metal effect. So I'll see you in the next part and if you're enjoying the content, please remember to have a look at my Patreon, I give out uh, free stickers, uh, six free stickers every quarter, that's 24 stickers a year. Um, I designed them all myself and it does help me sort of keep the lights on and put food on the table while I bring you these uh, tutorials and reviews. Thank you all and as always, take care, bye-bye.